Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sidetrack here, bringing you another Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at a mod written by the author Erogenous Beef, uh, entitled Big Reactors. Now, Erogenous Beef is an awesome modder, not only because of the great mod Big Reactors, but also because of his name. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the word Erogenous in the dictionary, and then think about it. Now, Big Reactors is a mod that revolves around large power generating structures. Big Reactors. Uh, we've got two different types of Big Reactors that this mod brings. On the bottom, it's, you see behind me, the dark gray structure, is a nuclear power generator. And it creates power directly from radioactive material. On top, what you see is a steam turbine. It generates power through steam. Now, generally, you pair these two reactors together. The bottom reactor, generally considered tier one, is what you have to build to get started. And then the turbine on top, you're going to build after you already have a tier one reactor. And between the two of them, either separately or together, they produce massive quantities of power. And I mean ridiculous quantities. One might even consider them OP. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 1 reactor. Uh, next episode, or next, yeah, part 2, is going to be looking at the steam turbine. So without further ado, let's get started. So this here is a small, big reactor. And let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, this kind of red box, the reactor controller, is where you're going to have all of the controls and all the information about the reactor. I will talk all about these things in a little bit, but for now, Notice the activate reactor button down here. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. We notice that as it starts uh, booting up, its temperature starts to rise. It starts to emit a redstone flux, and uh, it'll stabilize somewhere around 900 redstone flux a tick. Now, this is a lot of power. You think this is equivalent to about, what, 10, 11, you know, steam dynamos from thermal expansion. Um, it's a lot of power from one structure. Uh, it does run on fuel, like most things. Uh, it's going to use what we call yellowrite. Um, yellowrite ore spawns in the world and you refine it into yellorium. Talk more about that in a bit. But so, um, lots of power from one structure. And you can see that just in the last, oh, minute or so, we generated almost a million redstone flux. So pretty powerful reactor. Next, let's get started building one of these reactors. In order to build the most basic reactor from build re big reactors, you're going to need six different components. You're gonna to need to have a bare minimum of one reactor controller. You're gonna to have to have one reactor power tap. You need to have one reactor access port, one control rod, one fuel rod, and then for the smallest size, you're going to need 21 reactor casings. None of it's terribly difficult to make. As you can see, the reactor controller does require a diamond, but generally not too hard to get a hold of. The fuel you're going to need is uh, you're going to have to find yourself some yellowrite ore, but that spawns pretty regularly in the world. Not that hard to get a hold of. All right, let's start building this. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing, and you're going to see that I have elevated this above the ground just so I can get to all parts of it, you're going to need to make a framework of reactor casings. The smallest size reactor you can make is a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. So we need to have reactor casings on all sides. If you, you know, forget one, it's not going to work. <laughs> all right. Up next, we need to have a reactor controller. The reactor controller can go in any of the faces. I'm just gonna put it on the front because it's nice and easy. Now, you're going to have to have, let's do this this way. In the middle, you need to have a Eulorium fuel rod. You've gotta have at least one Eulorium fuel rod for your fuel to go in in any reactor. And it has to be in the middle. I mean in the middle of your cube. We'll talk more about that later. On top of every single fuel rod, you have to have a reactor control rod. And then somewhere on the edges, fly, there we go. You need to have things like a reactor access port, 
I'm going to actually use two different reactor access ports because the reactor access port comes in two different flavors, if you will. There's an inlet mode and there's outlet mode. So inlet mode is going to be yellow and all the arrows point inward. Outlet mode is blue and points outward. You can either change them the way I just did or you can right click them with a buildcraft compatible wrench and change their orientation. All right. Last thing you're going to absolutely need is a power tap. Now, and make sure it's a reactor power tap, because the power tap is where you get power. You can actually make a valid reactor without the power tap, but it would be kind of pointless because you couldn't get any power from it. All right, so once we place that last block, all the textures connect. This red reactor controller is now red. So let's go ahead and click on that and take a look at the GUI. So what do we see here? Let's talk about all these different things. Um, first thing, you'll notice that the status is offline. The deactivate power is highlighted in red. And then next to that, we have the activate button. Now, if we activate this, it tells us it's online, but nothing happens. Well, obviously, we didn't put fuel in there. So let's fix that situation. We can go over to the access port. And let me make sure I have some Eulorium in my inventory. Eulorium you're going to refine from Yellowrite, which is a yellow ore that spawns in the world. So we're going to add this Yellorium to our reactor. You can put an entire stack in here, and it will automatically pull whatever it needs to fill up your reactor. In our case, it pulled in four ingots. So if we come over here, we now have the core fuel status. It says 100% full, which is great. So if you read through here, it tells us that we have one fuel rod. Its max capacity is 4,000 millibuckets every ingot is a thousand millibuckets. We have zero waste. Waste is empty, which is what we would expect. But if we go ahead and turn this on, we're going to see it start to heat up the casing heat, the core heat, start to build some energy. It will stabilize around 250 plus redstone flux. What you'll notice is that the redstone flux per tick will start to drop. That's not a bug. It's not something you did wrong with your reactor. But what's happening is if you hover over the core fuel status is that our fuel is starting to deplete. And the less fuel we have, the less of a radioactive reaction we can have. So power starts to dwindle just a little bit. Now, we have an excess of fuel. We have 60 Eulorium ingots that are waiting to be added. What's going to happen is that once this builds up to 1,000 millibuckets of waste. This button right here shows us that we are going to automatically eject the waste. So we'll automatically object the core waste, and then it will input new Eulorium from our inlet mode, our inlet uh, access port. If you wanted to, you can turn off automatically ejecting waste, and then your fuel or your waste will slowly build up. You will dwindle. You know, your power generation will dwindle. It's entirely how you want to run your reactor. But if you have do not eject waste, you'll get an eject waste now button. However you'd like to do it, it's up to you. There are reasons why you might want to have a little more control over your reactor. But we're going to keep it on automatically eject waste. And in a little bit, I'm going to cut back once we've built up some waste so you can see what happens. All right, we are almost there. We almost have a thousand mill buckets. And as soon as we get a thousand, it dumps it out. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the redstone flux had dropped. It is now back up to 600 and, or <laughs> 260 uh, redstone flux. So where does that waste go and what form does it take? Well, it comes out our outlet, you know, our reactor access port that is on outlet mode. And it, it comes in the form of a cyanite ingot. The cyanite ingot we will uh, hold on to because they are used for the tier two reactor. You can also refine them into additional fuel that we can burn in the tier one reactor. More on this later. For now, I'm gonna stick it in this chest. Great. Now, before we move on, I wanna show you why I decided to do two access ports, because you really can get away with just one. If you only had one access port, your cyanite would get ejected right here and you could pull it out just like we did. Well. One thing that some of you are thinking is, well, man, what, am I going to have to babysit this thing? You know, isn't there a way that I can automate it? Yes, there is. So we can add a couple of, in this case, I'm using 
item duct from Thermal Dynamics. If you don't know how to use them, I just did a tutorial on them, so you can check it out. Um, go ahead and stick a couple servos on here. We're going to set this to ignored. We always want it to pull out uh, items. And up here, we're going oops, wrong side, this side, and I need to pop that off. Um, we are going to set this to always active ignore. And then we can go ahead and fill this up with Yellorium. And the Yellorium will get automatically fed into our reactor. And we will constantly have uh, Yellorium in our reactor so long as we keep this filled up with Yellorium, or at least have some of it. And then whenever the cyanide is processed, it will get spit out here, sent along, and end up in this chest. So great, we have two cyanide ingots, we have plenty of Yellorium, and we are set for quite some time. While we're talking about automation, there are two blocks that I want to show you. One of them is the reactor computer port, and the other is the reactor rednet port. Now, using these two blocks, you know, if in our case, we could say break that casing and stick our rednet port right in the side. And then we have all sides plugged in, no more room around our reactor. But this would allow us to have greater control over our reactor. If you know how to use computer craft, the reactor computer port is very cool. You can get all kinds of very high level fine tuning of your reactor. And the reactor rednet port is kind of a close second. So let's go ahead and add some rednet cable here and add a lever onto the edge and then right click on our rednet port. So we can do all kinds of things. We can toggle the reactor on or off with, um, you know, uh, the white rednet signal. You can, you know, put this on anyone you like. Um, you can input the control or change the control rod insertion. You can inject waste. You can output the fuel temperature or the casing temperature, um, or you can output the fuel mix. Now these are going to be output in terms of redstone signal. So the higher the temperatures, um, the percentage of fuel to waste, it'll be higher. Uh, redstone signal that comes out of your rednet cables. You can output the fuel amount, you can output the waste amount, output the energy amount, and using these things you can set up all kinds of interesting redstone um, circuits that would allow control over your reactor. For this I'm just going to show you something very simple, just the being able to turn the reactor on and off. So we're going to activate on level. Make sure that you hit the commit button. If you don't hit the commit button, your changes will not save. And then you'll come out here flicking the switch wondering why it doesn't work. So we should be able to turn the lever on and the reactor cuts on. Turn the lever off, the reactor cuts off. So that's pretty cool, especially if you have some kind of um, maybe a level emitter, you know, hooked up to, or a, a level emitter, <laughs> what am I thinking? Maybe you have a comparator hooked up to something like a resonant energy cell, or you have you know, all kinds of different things can allow you to see how much power is in your network. It'll automatically kick on and off your reactor as you need power. That way you're not wasting anything like we are here. We have a full energy buffer and we're still using fuel. Probably not a good thing to do unless you have just boatloads of Eulorium. One very last thing I want to talk about is this reactor control rod. If you go ahead and right click on the reactor control rod, you can give it a name more on that why you'd want to do that later but we can just say number one because you know that's original and I'm nothing if not original uh, what you see here is you can control the rod insertion so we can insert our rod we can insert it by a whole lot if we'd like um, and you can see right there on the tooltip you can change it by certain amounts uh, and by inserting the control rod what this does is the control rod goes down into your fuel and it stops the reaction. If you know anything about nuclear reactors, the control rod limits the reaction. So now we are burning less fuel and we are producing less redstone flux a tick. There are certain reactors that are actually most efficient if you throttle them back. Although generally as a rule of thumb, it 
most reactors generally take uh, a bit of a hit to efficiency the more you throttle them back. Whether or not you care about that is entirely up to you. So that's the very basics of big reactors. What we're going to do right now is talk about some of the more advanced methods and things that you should consider. More specifically, we're going to cover the big part of big reactors. All right, this is a bigger reactor. It's still three high, just like that little one guy over there, but it is now a five by five instead of a three by three. Okay, we have a fuel core in the middle, but now we have all this empty space around this fuel core. Well, what should we do with that? Well, first off, we could decide to pack it with more fuel rods and more control rods. Remember, a control rod has to go on top of every single fuel rod. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now. Obviously, if you add more fuel rods, you expect to get more power. And you would. Nothing wrong with that. But what I want to talk about is something a little more complicated, if you will. Um, so another thing that we want to think about when we design our reactors is what temperature is the reactor going to get to? Uh, if you look at you know your uh, GUI over here, it shows us that we have a casing heat and a core heat. And I told you before about them a little bit, but I said I'd talk about them in more detail right now, or in the future. Mm, here's the future. So our casing heat is going to be the heat of the outside of the reactor. And that puts out, you know, the higher the casing heat, the more energy you put out. The core heat is the heat of the fuel itself, the fuel rods. And the hotter that is, the more fuel you burn. Hmm. All right, so what can we do to cool down the fuel but increase the temperature of the reactor casing? Well, the answer is what's over here. You can add metal blocks. You can add graphite blocks. Graphite is just four graphite, or excuse me, nine graphite smashed together into a block. And then you can add a variety of liquids. What you see in front of me is no, by no means uh, all that you can add to your reactor. There's actually a spreadsheet of all the uh, things that, that, uh, that you can add that should be showing up on your screen sometime soon. And, uh, and a lot of this is going to depend on what other mods you have installed. If you have basic van uh, vanilla Minecraft, expect to see, you know, diamond, gold, and iron. If you have other things like Tinker's Construct, you can have copper, you can have a variety of liquids from thermal expansion. Uh, so, what should you do? Why should you pay attention to this? Well, bear with me for a, just a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of theory crafting with you to help you understand some of this. Okay. So the first thing to know is that there are two types of radiation that come out of your fuel core. There's fast radiation and slow radiation. Slow radiation is absorbed by the absorption stat of whatever material you stick in here. And you can check the spreadsheet to see what all those stats are. I'm not going to list them off. Fast radiation can be slowed down. It's slowed down by the moderation stat of all of these materials. Now, radiation can travel in four, it can travel through four blocks in each of the cardinal directions. So north, south, east, and west. That's east, that's west. South is behind me, north is up there. Yeah, I'm looking at my, doesn't matter. Uh, it does not travel in a diagonal, and it does not travel up or down. All right. So the four stats that you want to look at when you're considering these blocks are your absorption stat, and that's how much radiation is absorbed, specifically how much slow radiation is absorbed. You look at the heat efficiency, and that's how much of that absorbed radiation can be turned into redstone flux per tick. Heat efficiency is a pretty important thing. Moderation is how fast or how much fast radiation is slowed down, and then thermal conductivity is how well it cools the fuel rods. So something that you're going to stick next to a eulerium fuel rod, you're going to want to have high thermal conductivity. Okay. Something that you're going to want to put next to the reactor casing, you're going to want to have high heat efficiency because it will allow more heat to get 
you know, to warm up the reactor casing, which is going to produce more power. Okay. So, a couple of things, if you want to discover this all on your own, cover your ears, because I'm going to spoil a little bit. <laughs> For those of you that don't want to figure this out and play with it and tinker around, a couple of uh, notes. Okay, cryothium, gelid cryothium from Tinker's Construct, or excuse me, thermal expansion, is one of the best materials you can use in your reactor for pretty much most cases. Um, it's got a very high thermal conductivity, it's very good for cooling, so it's great to put near your cores. Uh, it's a very good moderator. It's great for slowing down fast radiation. It's got a very high heat efficiency, so it generates more heat or more you know, redstone flux for the radiation that it uh, absorbs. Okay, resonant ender is a great thing to put around the edges of your reactor. It's got the highest absorption rate. It's got the um, highest absorption and heat efficiency. So it's really good for around the edges. Um, and then graphite over here is kind of a situational block. It has almost no absorption rate. So it's really good to put between cores if you had, uh, say, a fuel rod there and a fuel rod here. You could put a block of graphite. Do I have any graphite on me? I do. Right between them. And that will allow the radiation to spread from one core to another core and basically uh, improve the efficiency of your reactor. All right, so back from theory crafting, let's go ahead and make a reactor and see what we do. Because one of the best things you can do with this mod is just play around. You know, goof off, see what you can make. Um, right now, let's add some copper. Okay, we'll add some copper around the edges. Because why not? Now remember, I said that radiation does not travel in a diagonal. So you could add copper here, but it's actually not going to make a difference. So you can leave it blank. Uh, sometimes, um, just for holding a place, you can add glass. Glass will not ruin your reactor, and it actually doesn't, you know, mess anything up either. So, okay. One block that I haven't showed you yet is reactor glass. Reactor glass is just glass and a reactor casing, and you can use this in any part of your reactor that is on a face. So we can just go ahead and fill this up. That way we can look into our reactor and, you know, looks kind of cool, I suppose. <laughs> uh, all right, we need to make sure we have a power tap. We need to make sure we have an access port and we need to make sure we have a reactor controller. Upon finishing, all of our textures complete. Our reactor controller is red, showing us that things are looking good. Let's go ahead and add some eulorium to our reactor and take a look at the GUI. All right, we've got fuel. Let's power this bad boy on. So if you remember, we had, what, 200 and something redstone flux a tick on this reactor. Simply by making it larger and adding some copper, we are getting 100 additional redstone flux that we weren't getting before. The efficiency is about the same, but look at the casing heat and the core heat, they are much lower compared to what it was over here. Very cool. All right, so you can play around with this even more. You can change out uh, your cooling, your coolant. You could put another metal in. You could play around and see what these liquids do. Um, other things you can do, you can make this reactor much larger. So we can come over here. Now this isn't even a hu truly huge reactor. It's just pretty big. So what do we have here? Well, I added a couple of extra cores or a couple extra fuel rods. So we've got four fuel rods. And now I have all of this space with which to fill with liquid. Hmm. Well, what should we stick in here? For this reactor, we're going to use two different fuels. And if you don't want to spoil anything and you just want to play with it yourself, cut the video because I'm going to make a pretty decent reactor right now. Um, so we're going to use Resonant Ender and we're going to use Gelid Cryothium. So the Resonant Ender, and this is much easier when you can fly as opposed to when you're uh, doing this in the game. Resonant Ender is always hard to work with. I'll give you a, a little bit of a help on how to fill most of this reactor. Oop. <laughs> and that's why Resonant Ender is a pain in the neck to work with. All right, Let's see if we can do this without getting teleported. Resonant Ender teleports you if you step in it. So, kind of a pain. Alright. 
filling this up with resonant ender. We're going to put resonant ender near the edges because of its high heat efficiency and its high thermal conductivity. All right, so we've got resonant ender in all of the edges. Um, you can see that in a diagonal to the cores, I just have glass because we don't really need to put anything there. It's not going to affect the efficiency. The other block we're going to put in here is gelid cryothium. Now, if you're doing this on your own, you should know that gelid cryothium actually will sink. And so if you're trying to get it to the bottom of your core or the bottom of your reactor, just throw it in the top and eventually it will sink down. All right. Let's go ahead and cap this off with some reactor glass so that way I don't fall in the gelid cryothium. And now here is another trick for how to fill up the rest of this reactor. If you have a reactor and you just want to fill the whole thing up with one kind of liquid, there's a great block that I'm going to show you. This block is the floodgate from Buildcraft. All right, so we put the floodgate down. On top of that, we need to somehow pump stuff into it. I'm just going to use a creative portable tank because it's nice and easy. And we start allowing liquid to go into that floodgate. And the floodgate is just going to fill the whole space below it with liquid. Um, sometimes for peace of mind, I fill this hole too, but you really don't have to. So we're just going to let this fill up, and I'll cut back in just a minute. All right, we're back. So our floodgate did flood this one, but I'm not too worried about that. All right, finished up our reactor. Now filled with cry uh, gelid cryothium, resonant ender, Let's go take a look at what we can do in this. Oh, let's add some eulorium. I already had some eulorium in the fuel rod, but uh, all right. So it's holding 48 ingots in our fuel, fuel rods. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see how much power it produces. Holy goodness gracious. <laughs> look at all that power, and it's still rising. Um, I think it's capped somewhere around seven to eight thousand redstone flux, maybe not. So we are using about three and a half times the amount of fuel we are using in the small reactor. We're using 0.67 millibuckets per tick. But the power that we're producing is just astronomically greater. Um, almost 8,000 redstone flux per tick. That's impressive. Um, part of the reason why we have such a high um, efficiency is because we have those four fuel rods. Those fuel four fuel rods are helping each other because they are in close proximity to each other. They are increasing the efficiency. So we have almost 400% efficiency, which lowers the fuel cost. And look at all that power. Excellent. Well, go ahead and turn that off because it, mm, power is filling up and <laughs> I don't know what else to do with it. All right. So that concludes part one. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the Tier 1 reactor. Now this is the Tier 1 passive reactor. Next episode, we're going to talk about the turbine, and we're going to talk about how you can modify this Tier 1 reactor to provide steam for this turbine. If you thought this was a lot of power, wait till we make one of these turbines. You'll be shocked. I certainly was. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Till next time, this is Sidetrack signing off.